Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. And the big headline change for this episode is that I've now built, I've, I've made some big changes to my Naquium processing and Naquium producing systems as well. So as you can see, this ship here that's, that's being loaded up at the moment with crushed Naquitite is rather different to the one I had before. So before we had the uh, we, we had the energy beam receiver in exactly the same place. In fact, it's the same energy beam receiver. I didn't take it out because these things take forever to heat up to 5,000 degrees. So I wanted to keep that exactly as it was and just um, and just build rebuild the rest of the ship around it. So beforehand, all of this infrastructure for dealing with the dealing with the heat was all up above above here, and it was a very very long thin ship. And then at the top we had three warehouses for storing the naquitite in. I've gone in and I've, I've turned that into six warehouses and as you can see we've now got three input belts here, one coming from each of these uh, warehouses that loads up the, um, the first warehouse which then loads the second warehouse which then passes it through onto the, onto the output here ready for it to be unloaded. And so this allows us to get um, twice as much stuff in there because there's now six warehouses instead of three warehouses. So twice as much stuff means twice as much, um, means each time it flies across you can get significantly more um, of, of whatever you're carrying carried across. And now in order to get that I need to go in and do an extra um, an extra research for the uh, for the um, stress, ship stress systems. So as it was the, uh, I had this set, I'd, I'd done research got both of these up to 1500 and as you can see the whole stress is now really low so despite the fact I've made the ship quite a lot bigger because I've made it shorter as well as wider this has only gone up by about uh, 150 or so. However, because I've gone from three of these containers to six of them, the container stress has rocketed up. My first design actually had nine of these in it, so another row of three on the side here, but that pushed this way over 2,000. I just simply couldn't afford it with the with the uh, stress levels I had available. So unfortunately, I've had to, I've had to stick with um, with a mere six of them. That said, it's taking quite a long time for these to fill up. The, the first column has filled, the second column, well this one has filled up, this one's 60% full, this one's open, um, almost 80% full. So it's going quite well, but they are filling up relatively gradually. The other big thing I've done here is that now instead of loading the Naquium ore straight into here, I'm, load I'm crushing it on site. So as before, we've got the, um, the, the mine here and the secondary mine down here that are both producing the Naquitite ore at a rate. We're then passing that up a belt all the way along here onto, onto this asteroid over here where we've got this arrangement of um, pulverizer and uh, mechanical facilities. I would normally, normally you'd use pulverizers for these but you can't use pulverizers in space you can only use mechanical facilities instead so I put the mechanical facilities in. They are taking in the Nacrotite ore, crushing it down and producing the uh, crushed Nacrotite. And the reason I'm doing this is because it takes four Nacrotites to make one crushed Nacrotite but both of them stack up to a stack size of 10. So that means if you crush it first, you can fit literally 10 times as much, sorry, literally four times as much into your ship. So in the so so each each stack of these each one of these ten nac crushed naquitite represents 40 naquitite ore and therefore four stacks of naquitite ore. And that makes it a lot more efficient, a lot more sol a lot more densely packed, shall we say? It's it's a much more it's much denser and much denser um uh, thing because I suppose you crushed out all the gaps between the between the lumps in the uh, in the ore perhaps I don't I don't know how it's supposed to work but it does the downside of this and I was talking about this in the previous episode is that because like, these are up in space that means I can't come along and shove them full of productivity modules so I'm limited I, I don't get the massive boost of productivity I did from when I was when I was doing this on tulip however I am able to transport four times as much, so I think it's worth it. So this ship will then transport eight times as much, or rather, we will get eight times as much Naquium out from this ship as we would have from the previous one. Um, that's actually not quite true. It's a little bit less than that because we had the um, the productivity boost from the from the uh, pulverizers before, which probably gave us an extra, probably gained us fifty percent, I think. From the tier six modules. Let's look. Let's 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 check that. Um, so we've got the no. It's in, in this one. We, we I was using the tier six modules eventually, um, and that gains you boom 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 boom, fourteen percent productivity per module, and there are about four of them in there. So it's just over fifty percent boost in productivity, which is pretty impressive. Um, but instead, I've got a four. I've got a, a three hundred percent productivity boost by doing this. Or no, three hundred percent. 
quantity boost by doing this at the at the expense of using these mines up a bit faster. So this is still bringing me out well ahead of anything else I could do. So the the um doing putting this in was wasn't too difficult. And putting this system in just meant sort of diverting the belt from here instead of instead of this belt going straight into loading these chests uh, warehouses, it went up here to 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 load these up. But I did also need to move, do a bit of rearrangement around the edge of the ship. So because the ship is now wider and well basically because it's a completely different shape. I had to move these warehouses around. I had to move this belt. I've moved this um, space probe silo from over here down to here as well, because partly because there's room over here now, partly because it also means this belt is now a bit shorter. Um, but it also means I've had to move the steam pipe. The steam pipe, instead of coming out on this side, now comes out on this side. The water goes in a bit further across to the left because the ship is wider. So there's been a number of little changes here and there. The the concern for this over whether it's going to work on it is largely in how how much heat gets used up by this um, from this energy beam receiver before it uh, before before the ship leaves and it's still only just under 9,000 so it's used about a thousand degrees C because it peaks at 10,000 and the minimum you can take it down to is 5,000 so you've got 5,000 degrees C to play with and we've used just over a thousand of it so we've used just over 20 percent um, and all of these tanks over here are, are full so I think well, practically full. So I think this is going well. We, the system is okay and we don't need to worry about it. Um, but I do need to make sure that this does get recharged every time it goes back to Norvis. The other thing is it's going to sit on Norvis for a, in, in Norvis orbit for a lot longer because it's going to take longer to unload um, twice, as much of, uh, twice as much down each belt as we had before. But that's okay. Um, oh, and the other thing I had to change was I had to change how much sulfur and iron is brought out by the ship each time when it comes out to produce sulfuric acid. So the numbers down here, I've, I've, I've played gone in, I've played with the numbers, so we're now bringing out 15,000 sulphur and 4,500, 4.8,000 iron. Um, and I've also got a bit more space in here now to have got the higher um, uh, ship, ship integrity stress available. So I've been able to arrange these um, combinators much more neatly and it's much easier to tell what's going on now. So we've got, for in Norvis orbit, we've got watch for... Sorry, in, in um, out here in Realm of Shadows, we've got watch for more than 30,000 um, Crush and Aquatite, and watch for also being in Realm of Shadows. 30,000 is 5,000 from each of these, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So it's it's not quite full, but it's nearly full, and I, so I reckon that's it's close enough. And I could go in and, and do the numbers exactly, but I, but I haven't bothered yet. I probably uh, Maybe I should, but I haven't. Then at the other end, it's a bit more complicated. We need to make sure there's enough water that's been re-watered re properly. And then, now that's almost guaranteed to be the case, because we don't get through very much water on this. And it gets refilled at this end as well. So we're not going to run out of water, but we want to make sure. We need to make sure the iron and sulphur has loaded. We need to make sure we're in Norvis orbit. We need to make sure the crushed Naquatite has been unloaded. And we need to make sure that the iron stream has been refueled into all of these tanks down here. Once all that's done and happy, then we can tell it to launch. And down here, we can once it's full, we can tell it to launch. So it's it's all fairly simple. And in an attempt to get around the problems I had before of spaceships launching and then just not moving, I've also put the speed target in here as well. So it's always telling it um, where to land and uh, what, how to clamp and how fast to go. So I think that should should be okay. And it was okay on the run out here. So I'm um, I'm optimistic. This has also required some changes to be made in Norvis orbit because now we've got a bigger ship land. Basically, because we've got a bigger ship landing here and it's got different belt belts in different positions for the outputting as well. So I've widened this a little bit, which meant basically meant I just meant I had to had to move this all of this stuff and the ship landing across to the left a little bit in order to make a bit more space for it. I've also reprogrammed all of these inserters to, to work with the crush and aquatite, so that's uh, going to come out. We're going to load up these. There's enough enough warehouse space here to empty an entire ship into it, um, and then the ship should then be able to leave again as soon as it possibly can. And then we need to worry, and then we just need to wait for the next ship to turn up. And then I've also doubled the amount of capacity in the, uh, in the little uh, ships that go to Tulip. So we've now got two warehouses in here. Um, so we can load up, as before, with the um, Crush and Aquatite, take it out. The Crush and Aquatite goes out on this belt and this belt, as you can see by the, um, the, insert, the way the inserts are programmed. It will then, that will then flow around the outside. In fact, let's have a look at um, Tulip while we talk about this. That then flows, because I had to, re had to do the same sort of modifications on Tulip as well, which I haven't... Oh no, I have done that. So yes, I've done them out here as well. So that then flows down here through the system over here the belt takes a funny route around here because i had quite a lot of belts but very very few underground belts so i just sort of 
I did funny things with it a little bit until it worked, and then it's now it's now all there. So uh, yeah, let's let's just ignore that. Um, and so I've removed the crushers, the pulverizers that were in here before, um, because they because they aren't needed anymore. The pulverization is done out in in Realm of Shadows. So so that's why the that's that's probably why the belt is this shape actually. So we then put the crush and aquatite straight in here. It's fed through these processes. And we've then got up here, we've got, I've, I've moved the tier six mod, uh, pr productivity modules I had into these, into the furnaces, because that point, that's the, the point where they'll be most valuable because there are fewer furnaces than there are of these chemical plants or these chemical plants. Therefore, they're going to get me, they're going to get me more benefit from being there. And then, as before, that feeds around into here. Oh, I haven't put a, I need to put in a splitter here and feed into... I suppose actually I probably don't. I was going to say I need to feed into both of the inputs in order to get the um, the naquium ingots to go into both sides of the spaceship um, here, both into this input and this input. But actually, the um, the amount of naqu naquium ingots you get from two warehouses of naquium ore is going to easily fit into one warehouse. So actually, I don't need to do that. It's going to be it's going to be absolutely fine. Um, just feeding it into one warehouse. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's okay for now. And then of course it'll drop it down this belt here where I'll go into this warehouse where the trains can come and pick it up and take it away. But we've only got 81 in here at the moment because the, the trains have been coming and picking it up and taking it away whenever there's a, a remotely useful amount of it. So I am quietly confident that all of this stuff that I've talked about is going to work. Um, it hasn't done an actual test run yet because the um, the ship out this ship out here hasn't managed to fill up yet in all the time I've been waiting. Although actually that said, we've now got this one is is very very nearly full. This one is um, 85 90 percent full. So we are we are nearly there. This ship is going to be ready to leave soon. However, it is a good 20 minute flight to oh it's ready. Plip. Okay, so the plan is that now. The system will all keep running because I've got all of the en all of the power stored in these um, steam tanks down here working as a, a steam battery. So that's going to keep everything running around here. All the miners running, the crushers running, and just loading up these warehouses. So the hope is that when that ship comes back again, there will be about enough crushed naquatite already in these warehouses to just pass it straight across into the ship, and the ship will be ready to go. But as I said, it's a long, it's a long old flight. It's going to take it about, yeah, it's nearly at full speed now. It's going to take it almost half an hour to get there. So we're not going to see that in this episode, I'm afraid. I'm not going to leave it running for half an hour while we, while the ship flies over, just, to, just to see if it works. You'll have to, you'll have to come back for the stream for that one. But that does mean, yeah. So when the ship, the ship will then hopefully it'll arrive here, it'll unload. This one will load up and it'll go off, and every, hopefully everything will just work, and I'll get significantly more naquium through than I was before. I do still need to rebuild the secondary ships for each of these. So there is another one of these. The um, what are you? You're the uh, the there and knack again again. So the there and knack again needs to still be modified to have the second um, second warehouse on it, and yeah, and so on. But that's. But I want to I want to have this one fly through and make sure everything is working really before I do that. So, um. Actually, it's probably the there and knack again is probably going to dock immediately as soon as the other one leaves. But yeah, never mind. So that's that's that. Hopefully, as I say, hopefully all of that is going to just work, TM, and we're not going to have any problems with it. So that has been the main the main push for the uh, for the last session was getting all of this done, and I'm quite pleased with the amount of stuff I managed to get done there. I think I think rebuilding my entire entire supply of one of my one of my more one of the more difficult metals is quite an achievement. The oil tanker system over here is still working nicely. Um, it has flown off and done another load since I was umming and erring over whether it was working properly in the last episode. As you can see, the tanks are all full. There's still oil left in here, so the ship just sitting here like this is absolutely correct. It's what it's meant to be doing. Over here, I I don't think I've done very much. Oh, I extended the belt over here a little bit so we're getting the uh, so all of these are running. We've got loads of ion stream, we've got loads of plasma stream. That's because we are currently limited by the complete and utter lack of naquium that we've got coming in here. So until that, so I basically I'm now waiting for all of that to get up and flowing again. And then once we've got a decent supply of naquium, this will all start working. We'll get the deep space science one packs through, and um, at, at, in a slightly larger quantities. And then I can start thinking about whether I'm ready to do Deep Space Science 2 or whether there's another gap in my infrastructure that needs to be filled. I have pulled, ripped through all of the um, Deep Space Science Pack 1s that I had available. Um, that was from doing a few bits of research. So I've done, 
Um, I've done Naquium Cubes, I've done Antimatter Production because you need it for Deep Space Science 2 and I've done anti I've done half of Antimatter Engines almost because they seemed cool and interesting. And I think I've also done, yes, oh yes, I also did the uh, Factory Spaceship 1 and 2 in order to get the bigger, in order to allow me to build the bigger spaceships that I wanted and needed for the, uh, for the Naquium run. But that is, yeah, I think that's coming along okay at the moment. The next thing I did was go out to Henki Sesui. Well, actually, I did this first because it was a, a minor crisis. I went and came out here to Henki Sesui, and I had a look at the uh, the nuclear power over here, and it was it was a bit ridiculous for various reasons. So there were there were <clears throat> there were three of my quad reactor designs that looked like this, all set up and and all set up and all broken for various different reasons. So the one here in the middle had simply run out of fuel. Um, because I think the place that was supposed to be supplying it here had run out of heavy uranium, uh, dark uranium, so it wasn't making any fuel cells. So that one, so that one had stopped. The one over here had stopped because I messed up the design and had both the uh, spent fuel and put the spent fuel cells onto the same side of the belt as the new fuel cells. So that broke, and this one's this one's presumably never worked properly, or at least not for very long. And the one over here had just stopped working, and I don't really know why. Um, it's a bit weird. I'm a bit slightly uncomfortable with why it just stopped working without any obvious problems with it, but I've pulled up all of the, I've picked up all of the um, the fuel cells from there and taken them back to Norvis orbit where they can be used for science packs and spaceships and other. There was there's definitely stuff I, I make that needs that needs the uranium fuel cells and I don't have a huge number of them, so I took them back for for use later. And I replaced all of those with one of these. So this is this is receiving potentially up to a, a gigawatt of power um, because we've got <clears throat> two of these heat exchangers that are capable of doing 500 megawatts each and this which is capable of doing a gigawatt. And if we look at this, we can see we've got a gigawatt available. We're using... There are tiny little bursts of power coming through. I'm not quite sure what's causing those. Um... No, I'm honestly not quite sure why that is blipping like that. Um, it, it looks like they seem to be happening, the, the, the turbine generator and the um, steam turbine seem to be doing it in opposite out of sinks with each other. So yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure what's going on, but I don't really care because everything is hunky-dory over here. And even if we look past, way back into the distant past, the highest peaks we were getting were only like, were less than 400 megawatts. So I think we're going to be absolutely fine with this system. And we've got a massive quantity, well a decent quantity of accumulators with 910 megajoules stored in them. So those are going to be able to weather any of these spikes anyway if necessary. But I think this system is going to be more than capable. It's incredible isn't it how I've gone from all of a system this big with all of this stuff in it and all of this uranium being used up to just this and I suppose technically, technically a decent chunk of this as well if we're being honest because the power is being produced here and then beamed over by this to Henke Sesui. Um Yeah, so it's a bit uh, it's, it's a bit disingenuous to say I'm just using this little bit over there, but uh, but yeah. Actually, it's just I've just noticed that we've got a transmission efficiency of 55% and one gigawatt being fed in, so we're getting 550 megawatts. So actually, having two of these in there is a bit overkill. Just one of them would be would be sufficient for the amount of power we're sending over. But it does mean that if this ever starts to run short of power. All I need to do is come along and put another one of these energy beam injectors in here, and we'll get, and then we'll get this will be a two gigawatt beam, so we'll get a gigawatt through at the other end, and everything will be fine. So yes, all of this is currently okay. I think this one's, yeah, this one's firing to Henke Sesui as well because I wanted to just heat it up. But as soon as the uh, Naquium ship arrives back, I need to point it back at that one to get it, get that one cooked up and ready to, ready to go again. And over here, we are using most of the power. Actually, no, we've got a couple of gigawatts free, so I could stick an extra couple of these in here, or an extra one on here, and we actually do have the solar to, to deal with that, which is quite nice. A bit of future-proofing seems to have gone in there. So, uh, yeah, this this is this is going well, I think. Finally, um, of the things I'm going to talk about, I think, I went over to a Tulip, and I sorted out the train problem over here, where, if you remember, one of them got cut in half because of reasons. I still don't really know exactly why that happened, but it did, so, um, yes. Uh, so yeah, the train 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 uh, trains got cut in half. I came down here. I I, I, re I replaced the bits that got destroyed, and and so it's just started working again. Um, 
I fiddled with the wiring a little bit to try and work out why it was having problems, but to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. I think it might be because I've got two in, two accumulators, sorry, two combinators here, and that's causing a little bit of delay, and I need to perhaps try and remove one of them. I'm not actually sure why I've got two accumulators, because one of them is saying if more than zero, then output one, and this one is saying if equals zero, then output everything else. So it's actually that one is completely redundant. Oh no, it was. There was a reason. Oh, yeah, it was because I didn't want to... Ha yeah, I, I needed to separate this signal and this signal because they've got funny, lots of funny input signals on this side and I didn't want them to go over to there. And that's because there wasn't a way to run another power line down here to carry the signal separately. Um, maybe I should use green, but I have a feeling that that would just put the green out the... Uh, well, maybe it wouldn't, actually. Maybe they're not colour-coded. Maybe. If, so, yeah, maybe if I had... Ah, oh, that's what I should do. For all of my ships, I should have the output signals on green and the input signals on red, or vice versa. And that way I'd be able to have all of the wiring in here without running into these sort of problems. That's a good idea. I'll try and remember to do it next time and see if it actually works. I also had to do some minor fixes. So, because, the, um, because this is no longer outputting stone down here because all of the stone is being passed up here to be made into glass. This is literally just passing down uh, core fragments. And so I, need, I had to come down here and I had to empty some of the uh, stone out of these wagons because there were, partial, there were partial stacks of stone in here and that meant the train was never going to leave until it got that little bit more stone just to top it up and that was never going to happen. So I've had to make some slight changes there. But it's now, it is now working. Um, I don't know why this is unbalanced, but it is. Um, I don't really care. Eventually, this one will fill up. It'll back up, and then it'll balance up. Oh, that's why it's unbalanced. Because I'm still using a to six um, balancer here, <coughs> because I'm not doing it properly. I could put some um, inserters in to pass it down all the way down the chain, but I think trying to balance it manually like that is a is just going to lead to madness, and it's not worth it. So I'm not going to do that. Okay, is that everything? Oh no, there was one other tiny little thing I did. Um, and that was to put that was to put in the uh, the pipe on a salier that I've been talking about and some extra tanks. So over here we've now got these extra tanks on this side um, and this pipe running around the top. And the idea behind this is that we've now got oil stored on both sides of the um, of the spaceship. So when the spaceship lands, it can be pumped in from both sides. We'll get a slightly quicker lift off because we've got more pumps going in and we don't have to fill, pass it through quite as many tanks to get it all the way across to the other side of the ship. So this should now be a bit quicker at loading it up. Maybe I should have some more tanks on this side. I don't really care. There is only one pump and one pipe going from this side to this side, but that doesn't matter because there's so much time available between the ship taking off and coming back again that this is plen clearly plenty enough to fill all of these up, as you can see, because they're all full. So that works fine. Okay, and that really is everything I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget, to, if I'm, uh, I'll be streaming more Factorio Space Exploration on Wednesday at uh, 7.30 UK time. So come along then to, to see me sorting out all the things I've been talking about today. We'll be making sure the Naquium is working properly. We'll be, make, we'll be starting to think about Deep Space Science 2. We'll be just trying to get, trying to advance the game on a little bit. I mean, I feel like I'm on the home straight, but the home straight is a very, very long home straight. So it's going to be quite a while until I actually finish this run through. It's a big old game. Um, and then on Monday, Monday evening, again at 7.30, we'll be carrying on with Minecraft Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles. Um, I, I now have a glorious, glorious Wizard's Tower, and you'll, um, you'll, you, you'll have seen that in yesterday's video as well, of course, because I'm sure you watch everything that's on my channel, as, you, <laughs> as, as a good fan would. Um, and so we've got that glorious Wizard's Tower, and I'm do, I've been, I did a lot of flowery magic last time, and trying to make mana in, in a little pool thing, and that, that's going okay. Um, but there is definitely more of that to go, more things that need to be done around that. And I need to start um, doing some more blood magic because Mike has made obscene amounts of blood for me and all the tanks are full. So I need to use some of that up and do goodness knows what with it. Um, and maybe someday I'll make some more real life videos. We shall have to, we shall have to see. But until then, there's always going to be the uh, GTA videos on Thursday as well. So um, they're, they're good for a watch as well. So as ever, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.